This is Catherine Parker from The Haunting of Hill House. You're listening to Derek Thomas and the Monday Morning Critic Podcast. You'll end up with people one way or another. You're connected. You'll be a shout from outside that door. Me asking for help. Maggie. You're a part of the world already. You'll find your way back to it. Because it will find its way back to you. So just come back. <laughs> like I said, you can hide, but you can't run. Welcome to episode 135 of the Monday Morning Critic. That was a wonderful exchange from season four, episode one of Fear the Walking Dead between Andrew Lincoln and Lenny James, a.k.a. Rick and Morgan, which leads us into today's episode with a very, very special guest. Today's guest, this is his second time on the show. I've met him a few times in person at various cons. Lenny James, he is the iconic, as as we've mentioned before, Morgan Jones, and there's so much I'd, I'd, I want to say to Lenny, and, and every time I interview him, his people are so wonderful and so kind, but because he's such a busy guy, there's not a lot of time, and I, I must take like eight pages of notes because there's so much I want to ask him, and i got to filter it down to 10, 15 minutes sometimes, and it's, it's really tough, but I've always loved Morgan Jones. Those of you that have been with me from the start know what I think of Lenny James, know what I think of Morgan Jones. Um, to me personally, there's no better character in all of cinema or all of the small screen. I just, I think the world of what Lenny brings to the character, because I believe he's a character that you could easily apply to life. And I don't think there's much difference between Lenny James and Morgan Jones. I believe they're very similar. The actor and the character, they're good people. Um, they're, they're people that are always, you know, positive and and looking to change certainly now with Morgan, but I'm just so excited to have Lenny on for the second time. He's he's the moral compass of Fear of the Walking Dead. He's just such such a good person. And one of the best scenes from this past season of Fear of the Walking Dead, season four, um, I believe it's episode 16, I Lose Myself, is when um, Martha, um, who's a wonderful actor, um, uh, uh, Tanya Pinkins, and... Tanya and Morgan have such wonderful scenes in season four. And to make a long story short, Tanya writes on on the forehead of Morgan, um, I lose people, I lose myself. There is such a wonderful scene when Lenny, as Morgan, is washing it off his face, off his head. And he just looks into the mirror for, I want to say, seven to maybe 12 seconds and that that's it like that encapsulates why Morgan Jones is such an awesome character he's just he's a person that like like the rest of us right we struggle with life we 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 have difficulties along the way but you don't stop trying to change you don't stop trying to become better and i i guess that's a small fraction of why i, I love what lenny brings to the character but there's so much more i apologize for the lengthy intro but that clip that opened the show was from season four and it does set up what goes on through season four and certainly what's about to happen in season five uh before i forget season five premieres june 2nd uh nine o'clock eastern time on sunday uh without further ado here is the man lenny james my next guest filmography includes such classics as Snatch, The Next Three Days, and Blade Runner. His role as Morgan Jones in The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead is both iconic and legendary. He is Lenny James. Lenny, I'm study- excited to have you back on again. How's life treating you these days? Life is good. It's a little hot and muggy here in Austin, Texas, but um, it's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> well said and let me ask you so I'm doing my research for today and I gotta tell you does it seem like you've been in the Walking Dead universe for 10 years because it seems like yesterday you and Dwayne uh, were just helping Rick Grimes I feel like it's gone by in a blink it has gone by in a blink and I have to keep rem- reminding myself it's a kind of you're absolutely right it's a kind of um, association for 10 years 
And I think people feel like I've been doing it for kind of 10 years, but I, I really haven't. The first five years, I only did three episodes. Mm. So I was busy doing um, other things, and, you know, those were the wilderness years. And, um, and I really only came back as a regular in season six of of uh, The Walking Dead. But yeah, it's it's a very weird, for me as an actor, it's very weird um, being associated with a character for that long and um, still be interested in playing him, him still being a challenge to me and um, still being um, something that um, at the moment I'm still um, kind of happy for him to be a large chunk of my year. No, that's well said. And, you know, uh, for those listening, Fear the Walking Dead returns June 2nd, this Sunday at 9 p.m. How has the transition been for you on a whole? Has it, you know, the last time we spoke, you were just starting the role or just about to get into it uh, in Fear the Walking Dead. How do you, how has the transition been for you overall, Lenny? It's been, it's been, it's been good. It's been helped by, um, uh, by our cast and our crew and our creatives um, uh, across the board the transition is you know I wasn't the good thing was is I wasn't doing it on my own um, you know uh, Garrett came in and Jenna came in and Maggie came in and and um, and that uh, you know uh, um, made a huge difference and Coleman and um, Denai and Alicia and um, Frank and Kim were all very kind of welcoming and and so that made a, a, a huge difference. I think last season was very much about the transition. Last season was all about the pomp and circumstance and hype of the crossover character and who stays, who goes, and how do they stay and how do they go and all of that. So last season was very much a kind of transition season, certainly for the first half of it. Um, I think this season we're settling into the show that we want to make and and the group that we are and the dynamics that are going to be um, at the heart of all that we do. And I think that this season the, the writers have been really brave and have kind of, you know, as they say, taken a big swing. And, um, and what we're going to be exploring is the future and what we want that to look like and, um, and the risks that that involves and the paths that we cross and the dangers that we come up against in trying to think about the world we want to rebuild beyond just surviving, um, actually um, taking a risk on um, what, what do we want the future to look like. And I think that that's a big and bold canvas to, um, to take our story to. And I think we're, we're giving it a really good go. Yeah, I'm very excited for season five. I got to tell you, and, and I hope this isn't too elementary. You know, we were watching, I, I rewatched season four knowing I was going to speak with you today. And I got to say, Lenny, it was just nice to see Morgan smile, right? Because in the past years, we've seen him, you know, he's a PTSD person. He's somebody that's been under a lot of stress. He at a point where he wants to clear. Um, and I know you're this amazingly trained actor, and I get that. Is it easier to play up? Uh, I'm looking for the right words here. Is it easier to play a, a, a Morgan that seems more content with his life than one who seems to be resisting and fighting the entire way? No, it's much harder to play Happy Morgan. Oh, wow. Much wow. It, yeah, it's, much, much, much harder. And why is that? Why, why, it's, why? Uh, because it's because of the, the kind of the history of the guy. It's, one, it's, a, it's the blessing and it's the curse of of this universe. I mean, it's the, it's the same with, um, with, uh, Melissa's character, Carol. It's the same with, um, Andrew's character, Rick. It's the same with Norman's character, Daryl. Our audience are so aware of our history. Mm. The audience mm. almost know, almost know as much about our characters as we do ourselves. You know, I've had conversations when I meet the fans where they go, you said this to such and such in this episode at this particular time when you were talking to them. But then, 20 episodes later, you said this to that person about that. And you kind of go, "How? what were you meaning when you said those two different things? And you really have to investigate that. And you really have to, you know, to own it. And you really have to be um, a protector of your character's history because we've given it to the fans and the fans hold it dear. 
so you know the 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 link between the dark side and all that Morgan is holding back in um, in order to to move forward um, is uh, you know I've been there with Morgan. I know that it's accessible, um, but you know the the notion of Morgan being settled and you know I really have to you know be mindful um, and not get too comfortable. Um, um, with Morgan and not allow him to, to, um, I have to count, I have to have a quota of smiles for Morgan <laughs> because they are, they, they kind of are, they're hard fought and they, um, and they can't be just thrown around willy nilly because, um, again, it's the responsibility of the man's history. No, that's that's well. Now I understand that's well said. And you know, I have to say, one of the bigger storylines in season four was the rapport between you and Martha. Uh, by the way, Tanya Pinkins was amazing in that role. Um, she was. She was absolutely amazing. Oh, and I, I and I swear, Mark, I, and I wish that we could have seen more of just you too. But the story clearly doesn't call for that. But you know, do you think if Morgan got to her sooner, she could have been changed because she was. I think she was where Morgan was heading had he not kind of, you know, reflected and kind of changed paths a little bit. Um, you know, do you find that? Yeah, I, I think that that was, I think that, sorry to interrupt, but I think that was, I think that was Morgan's mistake and Morgan's di- dilemma ultimately is that he connected with her because he thought she was where he was. Right. What he didn't realise is that she was way beyond where he was. Um, actually, she was when rock, when Morgan hit his rock bottom, her rock bottom was a couple of layers down. Right. And um, and his mistake was, and you know, only a mistake of ignorance, but his mistake was that he just he thought he had more time, and he thought that he um, understood, but actually she had gone to a. A level that um, not even Morgan had gone to, and I think that scared him immensely, and um, and was part of the reason why he stays with the group um, is because when you're out there on your own, the danger is you end up as far down as Martha was. No, that, that's well said. And, you know, I got to say the season five trailer looks amazing. We see the return of Daniel Salazar. We see the entrance of Dwight. What are you able to say about the upcoming season? You mentioned a little bit in, earlier in the interview. What can you tell us about it? Um, I can say that, you know, Dwight shows up and Salazar shows up. I can say very little beyond that other than it being fantastic having those two fantastic actors around. Um, I can talk, uh, um, I mentioned that we are going out and we're trying to um, uh, uh, take a risk on the future. I can also say, you know, uh, partly coming off of the conversation we were just having about Martha, that in season five, Morgan will, will come across a challenge that will shake him to his core that will scare him in a way that he has not been scared before and will will possibly um, uh, force him further back than he may well have been before. It's very difficult to to it to say what it is without saying what it is. Right, right, um, right. What I can say is that Morgan is going to be tested in a way that he hasn't been tested in either in fear or in The Walking Dead. And you mentioned how much the fans, you know, love Morgan, including the person you're speaking with right now. Um, at this point for you, Lenny, it, it's got to be more than just a character, right? He's got to be somebody that's very near and dear to you. And I and I hate the way that sounds. It sounds very fanboy like, but it, it's it has to be true. It's got to be. He's got to be a guy that is just so meaningful to you at this point. He is. Yeah, he's one of the. Um, you know. You know. Uh, when I you know hang up my hat in this whole acting lark um, it, there's no avoiding the fact that Morgan will be one of the, the things that my 
one of the branches of my career of my career tree if i can say that um, and a major and a major one um you know like you say i've been associating with him for 10 years there's no ignoring that but also i i have great pride in morgan and what i've been able to achieve playing him and i take um a lot of responsibility for him when we were doing this when we were first talking about the possibility of this crossover from the walking dead to fear the walking dead my primary concern was what does it do to morgan um it, it wasn't uh, uh, anything else my concern was is this good for him does this affect him in a positive way you know and then secondly it was what is it what does it offer for me as uh, as an actor what how does it further challenge me how does it um what does it uh, allow me to do with morgan that i haven't had a chance to do with before um and and then after it was all the practicalities of stuff but my primary concern and what i said to scott was if i don't think this works for morgan and that it just ends up being a gimmick um that will get a few more bums on seats as we say back in the uk <laughs> um then i'm not i'm not in the slightest bit interested in it um i have to be protective of morgan's legacy um partly in great in great part because of the affection that the fans hold him in you know my journey as morgan through both of the shows in very very large part certainly at the beginning was down to the fans connection to that character so you know i've got to be protective of him as a character but i also have to be protective of him as in relation to what the fans feel about him yeah that, that's very well said and my last question to you is this you know the movie Seabiscuit has this line where Jeff Bridges is speaking about a, a jockey, Red Pollard, who's been banged up by life. He says, you know, you just don't throw a whole life away because it's been banged up a little bit. And I feel like that's what Morgan is trying to save, in, you know, at least in season four, moving into season five. He's trying to save people. And, and even in the trailer, your character says, you know, this is not going to be easy. It's going to be very hard. And, you, and you've, you know, hinted at that. So I just feel like, and I'm worried because characters with a moral compass on The Walking Dead in The Walking Dead universe don't, <laughs> don't usually last very long. So I'm a little bit worried. No, they don't. No, they don't. But um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, like the, I like where Morgan is trying to go because at least in his efforts, he is really trying to, to turn things around and, and save things in the most dire of situations. I think that they, I think it's very. I think that point is very important. I have resisted all um, people who have ever mentioned that Morgan is the moral compass because that usually means you lose a leg or lose an arm or end up dead. <laughs> and none of those things do I um, want to happen. Um, but uh, but you know Morgan, you know yet again, he, you know undertakes an act of bravery, and that act of bravery is to dare to hope. And to dare to look into the future and project what what part you might play in it. And in this world, that's a that's a brave, brave thing to do. And uh, and Morgan is doing it. So um, I hope that it doesn't lead to his demise. But in this world, you know, every day could possibly be your last, and it can sometimes feel like that on the other side of the camera as well. So. Um, we shall see, but um, I think there is, you know, there's a, a couple more turns for Morgan before um, anything untoward happens to him, I hope. I, I just wanted to thank you for all the hard work you've done and how much we appreciate, and I love Morgan Jones, but more importantly, I want to say how much I really appreciate and love the work of Lenny James. Lenny, safe travels. I hope it, it, the season five is phenomenal. I'll be there cheering for you the entire way. I hope you enjoy it, my friend, and it kicks off with a bang. And um, I'm really, we're really proud of the of the first episode and how we lead into um, the rest of the season. So um, it is now us giving it over to the, the fans, and I hope you enjoy it. Lenny, thank you so much for your time. We'll, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, mate. Yep. yep take care.